Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. He's a level three whiskey sommelier. He's some dude drinking whiskey. That's how I do. That's right. And let's pour some Game of Thrones. We got new episodes five days a week. Make sure you subscribe and get the bell on to get notified. This is another Game of Thrones whiskey. That's right. Yeah, yeah. This is Royal Lock Nugget. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you have to be pretty, you got to be like a sturdy, sturdy dude <laughs> so, so to pull off the Lock Nugget. In a very real and legally binding sense. Yeah, yeah. That with this, here's why I say this. <laughs> First time we built a castle in the swamp, it burned down. Then we built another. It burned down. We built a third castle. It fell down. <laughs> burned down. <laughs> so the history of the Royal Lock Nugger Distillery <laughs> is that it burned down in suspicious circumstances in 1824. Yeah. Suspicious circumstances. <laughs> so they rebuilt, and its replacement also burned down in 1841. <laughs> They were uh, once named the, the new Loch Nagar Distillery. So apparently pyromaniacs have been around for a while. <laughs> yeah, they were ne uh, the new Loch Nagar Distillery, and then they had a visit from the Queen. Yeah? And they renamed it themselves the Royal Loch Nagar. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Oh, uh, before we get into the nose here, the slow motion pours. Yeah, why are we doing that, Rex? Because, here's, I was think, I was, I've been thinking, well, that could be cool, slow motion, just to add another element. Then... Um, you know, pretty often whenever I see a cocktail that looks interesting to me from a channel called How to Drink, mm, yeah, cool channel, cool dude, and they do slow motion pours, and they have like a way better camera than like my smartphone, <laughs> right? Because I'm just using they I'm really just, do. Just using a little smartphone, but it's like, oh, that looks so amazing. So we're gonna do our like shitty version, yeah, of slow motion. Did pours. you watch the video they released uh, to the Patreon members of their um, bar build? Arbit. It was cool. No, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, it was great. Okay. Yeah. yeah. How do, if you're into cocktails, it's very it's very much worth checking out. It's a cool channel. Okay, so this is from the uh house of Baratheon? Baratheon. Baratheon. Yeah. This is the house. Ours is the Fury is the name of their whiskey. <laughs> uh, for Royal Lock Nagar. Right? Now, uh evidently they have a stag that flew banners and there was a rebellion, he took a seat on the throne. Don't give me fake Game of Thrones history. And I can't take another fake Game of Thrones history. No, they were famous Don't for yeah, stags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, at one just, point in history, talk about the, whiskey. The, fa just the original founding of the Beratheon. Talk about the whiskey. I am not going to spoil anything. <laughs> and you know the rage that wells up <laughs> whenever you just spout nonsense. The original family made love to a stag. And so the house of B Baratheon is half stag. Most people don't know that. Spoilers. Yeah. Bottom half. <laughs> the best half. It's like fawns. They're all fawns. Yeah. Okay. Wow. This smells. Uh, it smells pretty interesting. It's got some some sweet multi characters and uh, characteristics in there. This is reminding but, me of Oban. But there is. What it, what is this? This earthiness? This yeah. Uh, there's a slight salty mustiness, and there's even a little citrus, which is always what I get in Oban. I like that. Like so. So far, this has been the most surprising thing on the nose so far. Yes. Yeah. Surprising in a good way. Yeah. There is. This is a whiskey that goes into Johnny Walker's uh, so, black and blue label. I. So I'm gonna say this: we're getting close to halfway through the Game of Thrones whiskeys. Mm -hmm. I am pretty certain there's not going to be a whiskey that's like a high proof. There's not going to be anything that's really aggressive or challenging. Lagavulin's coming. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I think they knew if they put Game of Thrones and Game of Thrones packaging, Game of Thrones story and background, Ooh. then they're going to sell a lot. And when they're selling a lot, they want to make the most money possible. So this is going to be another relatively low proof at 40%. Yes. Um, so I'm not approaching these necessarily from where I think the proof should be because Game of Thrones they're trying to make money I am approaching it from the flavors that are being presented because at every whiskey we've had up to this point I do wish it was a little bit higher proof I do wish the the, the characteristics and um, those flavors were a little bit more intense but I get where they're coming from I will tell you though at 40 the nose on this is pretty no, hefty the nose is amazing have you sipped yet yeah okay that that's my point mm -hmm. on the sip it's like oh the nose kind of leads you down a path and gives you these expectations that this could be pretty damn glorious if this was 46 this would have been amazing i'm saying this is what i'm saying because the nose is rich yeah yeah but then the taste is flat but this is 
This is why I'm not butthurt about it. And I'm genuinely. Because a line of whiskey like this is a really great opportunity to bring new people into the world of whiskey. Mm -hmm. And whenever you're doing that, you're not, you can't try to prove anything with cast strength and challenging notes and blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. You need to ease them in. And I think so far they've done a pretty good job of making sure that the flavors and the notes that are in these whiskeys are, are varied. And they're so not, they're not, they're not going to hurt you. Pretty, pretty easy to take, and um, I see it as a good gateway for a lot of people to find whiskeys that they're potentially really going to like and become more serious whiskey drinkers. So here's the thing for any company, right? A whiskey, video game, I mean, you name it. Mm -hmm. Catering to the top ten percent of people who consume your category right. is a good way to go bankrupt. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Right. And so. There has to be room for uh, whiskeys that reach out and make new fans. Right. So I think for casual people that could be converted into people that see themselves as whiskey people and start a collection and start exploring, yeah, this is where I'm putting it in the marketplace. And I think in in that kind of position, then it's doing what it needs to do. I agree. I'm not counting on this to you know open up my eyes to a brave new world of whiskey adventures. But uh, I am pleasantly surprised. Yes, I would drink this as just like an everyday pour if it wasn't so damn expensive because it was a Game of Thrones release. Yeah, how right? This is a thirty dollar bottle of whiskey. Okay. And how much more? Like, what kind of premium are you paying for the tubes? Uh, you're paying. I mean, what we paid probably sixty to eighty bucks for this. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. You got the Barathe one. He was trying to throw these away. This is forty dollars worth of tube here. <laughs> it really is. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's do a comment here. We got All right. Uh, James Gross, Compass Box Flaming Heart, mm -hmm. or Compass Box No Name. Oh, No Name. No Name is my preference. I don't. Uh, it, well, if it's between No Name and the Compass Box, the early releases, mm -hmm. then Compass Box early releases. No. If it's No Name and the most recent Compass Box was Hashmore Sherry Cask in it. Yeah. No Name. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Flaming Heart. Old wins, Flaming Heart new, pick No Name. No Name is great. Yeah. Yeah, so somebody's had a lot of whiskey. It's like, man, that's nice. Just need a little bit higher proof, and it could be, like, really nice. So wait, I am getting all of the weird earthy peppery notes. Mm -hmm. Oh, we, um, we didn't really talk about a lot of flavors. Yeah. We should do that. So I am getting all the weird peppery notes, whiskey right? Whiskey review. But they're, they're muted, so it's like you took a kick-ass rock band, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you turned on, you know, Led Zeppelin, but then turned the volume down to four. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's all there. All the stuff. And that's why you think this should have been a higher proof, because you can see what it's capable of. Right? You, you can sense down in here there's some interesting, rich things happening. Yeah. They're just turned down so low yeah, yeah. that I'm having a hard time getting a hold of them. Did you add a little water? I added a little water. I'm going to see if it brings out some of the oils. So if you're, if you're new to whiskey, this is kind of a, an unintuitive thing, but often water doesn't just wash out the flavors. Oftentimes... Didn't work. Yeah, not this time. Oftentimes, it'll actually unlock some of the oils and release more flavors, even more of a bite than what the original whiskey. That has more of an impact if you're drinking a whiskey that's high in the low, long chain, oily esters. Right. If it's a highly column, still, you know, distilled, then the, all those low chains, they're not gonna be affected by water the same way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, multi, earthy, touch, touch of black pepper in there. Yeah. Touch of honey in there. Um, but it's the, um, just the tiniest little bit of smoky you know elements. What's, you know the tiniest weird? little bit of smoky elements that make this interesting for me. I wonder if this is just power of suggestion because we've been doing these back to back. But I'm sensing a progression from Cardu, Dalwini, Glendola to this one. Are you doing this in an order? I'm doing on an order I chose, okay. but not an order they suggested. Okay. They right? suggested an order? No. Oh, okay. I just so picked an order, just right? Coincidentally. Coincidentally, I'm sensing a progression. No, that's true. It started with Cardu, which was all honey. Yeah. And then we got into Dalwini, which was a little more fruity than honey. Right. Right? Then we got into Glendolin, which was slight mustiness and moss with the fruit honey. Mm -hmm. And now we've lost all the fruit honey and only have the slight mustiness and moss with honey, with sugar. I agree. We are getting progressively more and more character in each of these whiskeys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Matt Reynolds, fail dry week. Let me know that I've crossed 
the line into problematic drinking territory. Yeah. So the collection is going to spend some time at a friend's house. So this is the reason we do dry week. Yeah. Now, uh, if you pass dry week, does that mean you have no problem? No. No, not necessarily. <laughs> and, and again, um, the reason why we have dry week isn't to be legalistic and it has to be a perfect adherence to our schedule. Uh, it's basically to take an intentional week off of whiskey. Because some people are like, oh, I go a week from whiskey drinking, you know, drinking all the time. But it's not intentional. Yeah. It's, I was so busy, I didn't even have time to do anything. No, no, no. This is an intentional break to where even if you had time and you would automatically reach for that bottle, it's like, no, we're going to intentionally take a week off because the automatic reaching, that's the slippery slope that people can have problems with. Now, we choose a week because you have to pick some amount of time, and a day's not enough, and a month is too long for a channel that reviews whiskey. <laughs> right? So that's why we pick a week. Right. Does that mean a week is the marker of whether or not you're fine? No, it's just we picked a random length of time right. that was easy for us to maintain. The principle is the thing. Yeah. Can you go without whiskey? That's the only question. Yep. Can you go without whiskey? And, uh, you know, we do this once a quarter. There's a link down in the bottom if you have any questions or concerns about your own drinking or loved ones. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to the next Game of Thrones whiskey if it stays true to the progression that we accidentally stumbled into. I think the next one's going to be Talisker. I love my life. <laughs> Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for friends. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may you, you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.